Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Holly, please uh, conduct roll. And uh, people, when you acknowledge being here, please uh, state uh, which agency and uh, group you're representing. Jason Hoffman, representing communication centers from uh, Carroll Communication Center. Mindy Benson. Mindy Benson, Blackhawk County Emergency Management, representing Iowa Emergency Management. Michelle Bischoff. Michelle Bischoff, City of Des Moines Fire, representing Professional Fire Chiefs. Curtis Woten. David Ness. Municipal Police from Des Moines. Daniel Schaefer. Municipal Police, Denison. Dan Fank. Sheriff's Office, Worth County. Jason Schlutenhofer. Haley Nichols. Cindy Hike. Peter Huffman. Okay. Trace Kendig. Eve Hove, Blake Jerushi, and Jessica Turba. All right, and when Peter gets here, we'll have a quorum. Is there any legislative members on the phone? Oh, did I skip Patrick? Okay. All right, we have a quorum then. Patrick Updike, Iowa Department of Corrections is here. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, any other board members uh, able to join that it were not called or missed the call? All right. Uh, opening remarks, uh, real brief. Briefly, thanks to everybody that was able to join us today and. Let's get through the agenda. Is there a, a motion to approve today's agenda? Bischoff in a second. Thank you. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Swick report. Uh, I'm sorry, we would need to uh, approve the meeting minutes from September 9th. I'll entertain a motion for that. First and second. Any further Benson. discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Now, Chris, uh, Swick report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, go ahead, uh, verify the audio still works in this uh, environment with multiple mics going on. Can everybody hear me okay? Just to make sure that everybody can hear me on the go to meeting, uh, the audio sound all right, Chair Fank? Sounds good. It sounds good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, always an adventure with extra microphones around uh, to make sure that the right one is on. Uh, I, before we get too far into this, I do want to extend a huge thank you to John Benson, Blake Derushi, uh, John Paoli, and Allie Bright, uh, and all of Homeland Security Emergency Management for letting us host the meeting here at the State Emergency Operations Center. Uh, the facility is impressive and, and exceptionally capable. And for those that are here in the room uh, today, the one thing I did want to point out that the screens we're using, uh, they are uh, unique in the sense that these are the same types of screens that are on the uh, Times Square boards out in New York and the closest one aside from our State Emergency Operations Center here, I believe, in is in Chicago. So exceptionally capable facility with a lot of new and cool technology and I do want to extend a thank you for HSCMD for letting us host the meeting here. Start rolling into some updates now. Um, our final quarterly report for our PSAP grant program has been transmitted to HSCMD. 
again, I thanked everybody last month, but I do want to extend uh, another thank you for everybody involved in that project. John Benson, Blake Derushi, and others at Homeland Security Emergency Management. Uh, Chief Walzer out of Cedar Rapids Fire, who's also our Deputy SWIC. Uh, DPS Fleet and Supply and Captain Pierce for the space and storing all that equipment and every PSEP that worked with us on the distribution delivery uh, and the dissemination of the equipment along with uh, the installation. Uh, we continue to see success daily in the field as a result of this initiative, and we've had several big in incidents even within the last couple of weeks where uh, the consulates and, and, and control stations that were given out to PSAPs really, really proved their worth. And, again, thank you for everybody for your help with this project. I think it's been a, uh, an, an exceptionally successful initiative, and, and the, uh, the field results speak for themselves. Uh, an update uh, for everybody, too, if you remember last month, we had the information sharing framework uh, project uh, presented here by Rob Dew and John Contestable and his group at CISA. Uh, Blake Derushi and I have continued to meet a couple of times with them over the last month in making sure that we have a game plan for this that is uh, uh, cerebral and pragmatic and sage. Um, at this point, we're working on identifying the areas of the state that will be asked to participate in this. Um, Blake and I are working on that list. We're gathering some data, and uh, we will present all of that to John's group uh, next time we meet. I think that might be next week or the week after. Once we have a consensus on the locations and the communication centers that, that would be involved, uh, we'll reach out to those stakeholders to verify that they're willing to participate as well. We're very optimistic on what this project will bring to the state of Iowa. Uh, I think this data interoperability component with CAD to CAD is, is very worthwhile in its undertaking, and I, I see a lot of good things coming from this. A uh, quick update on my activity from last month. Uh, I mentioned that I was supposed to present at IWCE, and I did. Uh, we had to present remotely, though, since invitational travel was uh, pulled due to the pandemic. Again, my topics uh, were coordinating interoperability at all levels of government, and that was done with the states of North Carolina, Texas, and CISA. Then, of course, uh, the other uh, presentation was advancing interoperability, uh, the role of Project 25 user needs, uh, and that was done with representatives from Bureau of Land Management, CISA, Texas, and Connecticut. Uh, things with both presentations went very well, uh, and I know with uh, uh, a meeting like IWCE, there's always presentations that we'll have an interest in as well uh, that are not keynote speakers that are streamed. My plan, once these are posted, which I think will be by the end of this week or early next, is to go over the ones that are posted and roll through those and see if there's anything that would be germane to what we're doing here and bring that information back to the board next month. Quick update on the duration. Uh, we continue that uh, coordination uh, with the City of Clinton for that West SDR deployment. Things are steady state with that uh, deployment, so that's good. Uh, still am coordinating with HSCMD uh, on our reimbursement from FEMA for that deployment. I don't have anything new to report this month, but as information comes in, I will share it with the group. Uh, with local agency training, we still ha are offering that. We delivered a couple of training sessions here just within the past week. Uh, they can be as formal or as informal as agencies would like, um, uh, but we continue to offer this to agencies at no cost to them. We're still working on regional training as well. Logistics are the issue with that on what's open and what's not. Again, if you have any facilities in your areas that you'd be willing to offer up for the afternoon, please let us know and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get things scheduled. A couple of final items of notes here with Status Board. Uh, in order to undertake a project like that, there's an MOA that has to be done between both states since it involves the transferring of source code. Uh, our legal review of the MOA for that is complete. Uh, it's now uh, been transmitted to Minnesota for, for, for their review, and uh, once that review is complete, we'll receive their updated source code so we can apply our updates. Uh, as, as far as the stuff goes, uh, they've been able to successfully deploy the updates they were just recently working on within Minnesota. Things seem to be stable and working as expected, so that's good for us. A couple of the feature sets that would be coming our way will be a notification of when reservations are about to expire, uh, which is good. And then also a couple of other new features, uh, such as uh, if, if, if there was a risk of overwriting a previous reservation from another uh, account, uh, there, there will be a warning message that pops up and lets the end user know that they may be overriding someone else's uh, reservation and if that's something they really want to do. So feature sets like that are coming, um, and uh, I will keep the board apprised of uh, how those updates are going. A couple of things really quick. Uh, we're still undergoing some maintenance across ISIX, and those uh, site uh, status updates are being posted on status board as well if they are going down for maintenance. 
Uh, so keep checking on that site status tab uh, to see if a site nearby is a pot- uh, potentially going down for maintenance. Once again, status board is available at no cost to agencies that want to use it. So if you haven't signed up yet, I would encourage you to do so. And finally, we had our FOG and EFOG and TICP meeting at the end of September with CISA. That went well, and we had a pretty good attendance with that. And I think we have a very solid foundation to build our statewide TICP and FOG and EFOG. Uh, it will be a slow burn on that process. Uh, we're about uh, three or four months into it now, and I would expect us to have some working products uh, within the next year. So uh, good news there. It's coming, and I will keep the board uh, up to date on that progress as well. With that, Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. I will go ahead and take any questions. Hearing none from the group, I've got uh, one, Chris. I wonder if... Uh... I was unable to attend the uh, 911 meeting. Uh, did they end up uh, adjusting their date uh, for Veterans Day conflict uh, forward to the 10th? Or uh, if so, I think that we're going to probably try to follow suit. Yep. I don't have an update on that. Uh, Blake is uh, tied up today with the IAMA conference uh, in downtown Des Moines. Uh, that conference runs through early Friday, and uh, the plan was to coordinate with them uh, once that conference is done and the dust kind of settles from all the presentations and conferences this week because APCO and Nina was also this week. And uh, once that dust is settled, we'll, we'll, we'll land on a date for the adjusted uh, meeting. Uh, this was something that was pointed out to us is that our next board meeting is slated to fall on Veterans Day, and we obviously want to avoid that. So the two options would be moving it to uh, either November 10th or the following week on that Thursday. Um, November 10th seems to present fewer conflicts at this point, and, and that's kind of where we're leaning right now. Very well. Thank you. Reference the um, CAD to CAD interoperability um, project. Have the CAD vendors for the beginning of that been chosen, or what's the uh, process for choosing them? So the process right now is to look at various parts of the state and figure out who the players are. If we know what they have, great call volume, uh, the makeup of, of the area, urban versus rural, and go from there. Uh, the goal of the project is to try to find um, some levels of consistency among the centers so we have some control mechanisms as far as variables go, but then enough differences to make the project worthwhile. Um, we haven't necessarily looked at it from a vendor standpoint. It's something that does pop up, though, as we look at parts of the state. So, for example, if we're going to look at an area of the state that may have two or three PSAPs nearby, we may already have on record what they have, and that is factored into it, but it's not a primary focal point, if that makes sense. So uh, does that answer your question, Jason? In a sense. I mean, it would seem to me, as I think about what's involved with uh, – our CAD system, um, which is what I'm most familiar with, that in a lot of ways, the vendors in play um, would be one of the more important um, uh, factors that one might be looking at. You know, how current is their database technology? Uh, what's their, uh, you know, abilities to, you know, write an I and I or whatever, and that's about the extent of my technical knowledge that I can speak uh, uh, authoritatively about. about but um, I think that's a pretty important uh, factor. Um, but I understand the desire to to try to use it as a proof of concept, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to um, have uh, a dispatch center from desperate parts of the state try to interoperate with their CAD, there won't be a lot of usable information uh, to be shared, um, at least not enough to formulate, you know, enough of good data. So appreciate that. Yes, sir. And 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 I will say the areas of the state we've looked at, um, we do have an idea of what they have for CAD. And uh, it is representative, at least in some ways, of some of the CAD vendors that are used in the state. There, there There's one that has a significant number of, of centers. I think it's like around 60 percent or something like that their name is in the mix with this too as far as some of the areas we've outlined so far again a lot of the work is still preliminary and we have to again kind of land on some consensus on on where we want to do this within the state so it's a balancing act right because you want to look into um are they urban or rural is their call volume high or low 
uh, even for their demographics and makeups. You know, you may have some parts of the state where they're rural, but they have exceptionally high call volume. Uh, and we have some records of that based on 911 calls. And then, of course, what, what, what CAD systems are they using? You don't necessarily want them all to be the same because that's, that fruit's too low hanging, right? But you do want some, some variability from, from the manufacturer so that you can work on an interface uh, down the road or at least gather the information to contribute to an interface that, that would yield some useful information. So, uh, to your point, um, we, the areas we've looked at have some of the major players in the state along with some that are still up and coming. So uh, as that work continues, we'll keep you updated. I can't give you all all of the information right now because it's still preliminary, uh, but uh, we're making good progress. So, All right, uh, hearing no other questions for uh, Swick Myers, uh, is there anyone to present a 911 council report in Blake's absence, or are we going to? I think we're going to end up getting a written report from them. Sounds good. We'll move on to the uh, UGC. Uh, Sheriff Schlutenhofer. Uh, Sheriff Schlutenhofer could not make it today. Um, he has uh, some uh, things to take care of within the sheriff's office in Wright County. Uh, Mr. Dennert, uh, the vice chair, uh, is on. Uh, Rob, you can give the report or I can if you so choose. Please feel free. Feel free. Uh, so the user group committee met last month. Um, we did not necessarily go over any new applications. Uh, the system manufacturer, Motorola, expressed an interest to do a quick uh, check of their loading analysis and process to make sure they had all their numbers uh, in good order and up to date. So we didn't go through any applications last month. The application review is expected to resume at the meeting next week at its normal cadence. And then uh, newest export uh, applications will be brought up uh, at, at the uh, November board meeting. What we did accomplish, though, was the review of the participation plan. Uh, that participation plan has been amended to include paging talk groups. Uh, we have more agencies on ISIX now that are looking at doing paging, and it was expressed to us that it would be wise to include those paging talk groups in the analysis right up front so that we had a better idea of what the true loading would be. So under new business today, uh, we'll go over that uh, participation plan update, but that was the main focus of the conversation for the user, uh, user group committee last month. Uh, with that, I can take any questions. Hearing none, uh, please roll into the uh, finance committee report. Yes, sir. Um, so the financials for the last month, I believe our expenditures for the month of September were 13000 $678.52, and that was the Broadband and Interoperability Committee Fund. Uh, so as of today, we have right around $208,321.84 left in that fund. Uh, so that's the updated financials for the, for the month of September. The one thing that we have been looking at over the last couple of months uh, to roll into another topic is, is, is several financial items. Uh, you may recall that we talked uh, at length about uh, the board asking for an increase in the appropriation. Uh, that process is in motion. Uh, I don't have anything to report on that. But we've also looked at some other conversations recently uh, that have sprung up regarding other things that would require some level of funding uh, related to ISICS. It's not necessarily board funds, but it is uh, relatively germane to the functioning of the system uh, and things like that. And it was deemed appropriate to, to have board involvement in that process. Uh, of course, with any conversation of funding, it goes without saying that we won't be looking at anything that's going to take away from other programs like 911. This would be a separate fund. But we are looking at some of the needs of the system long term, uh, say 5, 10, 15 years out, trying to qualify and quantify them and making sure that we have a good strategy and direction uh, to go forward in the future. Uh, we've had leadership within DPS express support of this initiative as well, and it seems like it's time to start uh, discussing this maybe a little bit more in detail within the financial structure of the board. Um, candidly, I would like to have a lot of these discussions start uh, this month, and then hopefully we can have something together for the board in November or December. Um, again, uh, these conversations are something that could be fairly wide-ranging, but we would want to come up with a focused kind of direction uh, going forward. Uh, I'll That's the report more or less for the Finance Committee. Again, if you want to participate in those discussions, please let me know. Uh, but I'll go ahead and take any questions, Mr. Chair. 
Yeah, just so I understand, uh, Chris, you're talking about kind of a needs analysis uh, from the board level that would be shared with, uh, I assume, the uh, DOT and DPS commissioners in uh, hopes that they would uh, su uh, support some sustainable funding for our short and long-term initiatives. Is that correct? There's several components to to this, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, there's the board component, then there's the system component, and then the user needs component. And 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 I think it's fair game to look at a lot of those and come up with something that could be presented because, uh, you know, depending on what that says and if there's enough support behind it, it may be something that we could accomplish within the next couple of fiscals. So any further questions for Chris? All right. Uh, govern governance uh, Committee, uh, Chair Huffman, are you on? I don't see him yet, but I can go ahead and cover the report uh, for him in his absence. Uh, the Governance Committee did meet last week. Uh, they went over the pursuit standard, standard 1.4.0. Uh, that standard had uh, edits from operations and standards working group. Uh, they made some uh, cursory uh, edits to just the, the order of one paragraph and some small grammatical changes, but otherwise the standard is in its form as it was from operations and standards. Uh, it was brought to the board for this uh, month's approval under new business, and uh, it'll be coming up later in the agenda. We'll go ahead and take any questions. Well, I know a lot of time and effort has been uh, invested in that uh, pursuit policy. It's important to a lot of uh, uh, people, safety of uh, Iowans and uh, responders alike. So. Appreciate the uh, continued effort and making sure that everybody was comfortable with what's uh, being proposed there. All right, on to the operations uh, committee. Chair Bishop. Thank you, Chair. The operations committee has met twice since our last board meeting. Um, as was previously mentioned, we reviewed the uh, pursuit policy after standards had, had made their um, suggestions, and as well as have continued our conversation with encrypted talk groups and we will be meeting with technology at our next meeting to, uh, to have a joint meeting to further discuss the policies that have been drafted and the concepts that we have developed behind interoperability. I'm sorry, behind encryption for interoperability. Um, uh, and I'd take any questions if there are any. Thanks. Thank you. On to the uh, outreach committee. Yeah, operations uh, sent out, or I'm sorry, outreach sent out the newsletter uh, last month uh, on time. So again, thanks to Holly for getting that out there. Uh, work continues on the um, uh, newsletter each month. Uh, so if you have any uh, information that you feel would like to be in the uh, newsletter, please let Holly know so we can get that uh, out. Otherwise, a pretty short report this month, Mr. Chair. I'll go ahead and take any questions. On to uh, training. Is Chair Nichols on? I do not see her, so I can cover that as well if you want. Great. Thank you. So training met last month. Um, the topic of conversation was the approval of the presentation and script for the air ambulance standard. Uh, they've been working on that module now for a couple of months, and uh, they uh, landed uh, no pun intended on some language for the script in the presentation. Yes, thank you for the uh, the, the drums. Um, so uh, that script has been approved, and uh, so it's a slide deck. So the topic for the next month is to go and and, and have uh, the person that volunteered to record it record it. Uh, the narration on that module will be Erin Froning from uh, Clear Lake PD. So we want to extend a thank you for her. So I'll be heading up there hopefully in the next couple of weeks for that recording, and then we'll have something ready to edit and uh, post relatively soon. Any questions for training? All right, uh, thank you. Chair Updike, can you present the uh, Technology Committee report? Thank you. <clears throat> this will be pretty short, but the uh, Technology Committee met on September 23rd and October 5th, and we're kind of going down an alternate path, which is global positioning systems. And so we're just taking the 20,000-foot uh, view of global positioning systems and how it relates to data interoperability. 
we did have uh, we did have a guest from the military side of the house to kind of get their perspective of of how interoperability from a global positioning uh, standpoint looks uh, and how it all relates to those entities that operate in those environments. So we're going to keep going down that path, looking at this. I don't I don't know how long this will take, but it's a, a pretty deep rabbit hole that we're going down. So uh, we plan on having more guests who are uh, involved in that arena, and we will provide that information as we move forward. Thank you. That was short. Thank you, Patrick. First Net Broadband Committee, Chair Bischoff. We met uh, this week. I think it was this week. <laughs> As I look at Holly, I'm like, was that, was that this week? Um, and had a presentation on HPUE um, and then a regular update. Our next meeting, we will be having Andy Sackrider, who is the um, RAN engineer, uh, share updates on the network, overall health of the network, and uh, where AT&T is working to improve things, and following up on um, disaster recovery plans from AT&T's perspective. What questions do you have? Uh, high power user equipment. I think it's user. Any other questions? All right. Uh, any information sharing uh, between board members? Uh, just your, uh, for everybody's uh, awareness, I did receive something, I believe, on a DocuSign or some electronic communication seeking a signature to memorialize the uh, agreement between uh, uh, ISIX and uh, Minnesota's equivalent. So uh, with uh, Chris's concurrence this morning, we'll get that uh, signed and, and returned to them. Anything additional for information sharing? All right. Do we have a... Uh, a Motorola uh, project manager on the uh, online for a report. Scott Richardson, DPS Communications. I'm going to go ahead and give the uh, the update for the uh, system admin, which will contain the uh, the maintenance for the system. Um, this month, we're in the final stretch of the annual preventative maintenance for 2021. As of now, 82 locations have been completed. Four are in progress today, Beaverdale, Louisa, Danbury, and Woodbury East, with one more to be done tomorrow. That's K24IM in Kiyosakwa. Yet to be scheduled is the Mason City site and the Des Moines simulcast cell, as well as the four core sites and four state dispatch locations. Um, once again, if anybody would like to receive updates as far as maintenance goes, I send them out to quite a few people, but if you're not on the list, you can send an email to isixnock at dps.state.ia.us, or you can also update your contact information at the website isix.info. And for all board members that are here today, if you would like to tour the ISIX knock after the board meeting is over, we're right around the corner. You can come in. We'll show you what we have going on in there. So, And that's my update for this month. Oh, wait. I do have numbers. Numbers from uh, September. Uh, ISIX continues to grow. We now have a total of 25,854 radios on the system, which is an increase of 100 over August. Total talk groups are 2,582. That's an increase of six. And the total push to talks for September were 2,285,077, which is down a little over 102,000. And that completes my report. Thank you for that report. Uh, CISA, OCD update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, I want to say thanks for the opportunity to be part of this uh, group and to uh, give this presentation. Um, this is a terrific facility, and it's great to be in person. 
As I step in for uh, Jim Lundstedt, I think it's helpful perhaps to remind the group a little bit about CISA and uh, and just to tell us tell you a little bit about uh, how CISA is organized. There are six primary divisions within uh, CISA. Certainly, you're most familiar with the Emergency Communications Division, where where Jim Lundstedt and uh, worked and I work. We also have the Cybersecurity Division and the Infrastructure Security Division. Those are part of our name. Supporting all that, we have the Integrated Operations Division and the Stakeholder Engagement Division and the National Risk Management Division. Um, the Emergency Communication Division, where I'm at, is led by Executive Associate Director Billy Bob Brown, and you may know from previous conversations that there's been a lot of discussion about moving the emergency communication coordinators like myself and Jim Lundstedt uh, from ECD, the Emergency Communications Division, into the Integrated Operations Division. That was supposed to happen on July 1st, got pushed back to October 1st. Then it got pushed back to November 1st, which is, as of today, the official date that we're going to move over. Um, I know that uh, Swick Myers has had the opportunity to to share uh, Iowa's uh, concerns about uh, moving us to a different division and to make sure that uh, the same level of service can be afforded to the uh, 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 state of Iowa and the other states uh, that the coordinators serve, and that CISO leadership heard Chris, and they heard the other SWICs, and there is a commitment that our level of service uh, should remain the same. Um, I'm optimistic. I think as we continue to push that date back, um, they're, they're getting more of their ducks uh, lined up, and, uh, and, and I, I'm not concerned about that move over, and, and uh, I intend to continue to serve uh, Iowa as well as uh, Jim Lundstedt did, or at least I'll try and, try and hit that very high mark. CISA as an organization, as an agency, is a very young agency, only three years old, and our our director, Jen Easterly, was appointed only in July, so she's a, a new director to a new organization, but I'm really excited about the leadership that she brings to CISA. Um, she's definitely set the tone for our culture and has very boldly announced that we are the nation's cyber and infrastructure defense agency. We are one team we are one fight, and we are one CISA. Within the Emergency Communications Division, our Director Brown has emphasized ECD's Vision 2030, and that's to keep pace with the evolution of communications to Internet protocol-based technologies. I think we all see that. We're moving from circus circuit-based technologies to IP-based technologies. Our radios are nine parts computer, one part, one part radio, right? Um, our workforce in CISA, in the Emergency Communications Division, really needs to become a cyber workforce to continue to best serve the states. Uh, our Director Brown is also working on our annual operating plan. That's something that needs to be synchronized with the other divisions within CISA so that we're all working uh, in harmony. CISA recently uh, announced some of our statistics for the end of the financial year 2021. Our the government accounting year ends at the end of September, and so we're all busy uh, doing those final reports and preparing for our new uh, our new year. But a couple of interesting stats that come out of uh, the Emergency Communication Division from our last fiscal year. We completed 164 technical assistance. Uh, you're all familiar with the technical assistance that we have offered Iowa in the past. As a nation, we delivered 164 uh, assistance uh, last year. We conducted 12 skip workshops, and we educated 581 communications unit students. Um, of particular interest, you may have heard that the National uh, field operations guide was updated this past year and is going to be re released any day. Um, we've been saying any day for a couple of months. I turns out it was at 10 o'clock this morning that we actually have updated the NIFOG 2.0, so you should be able to get that. I haven't actually gone online to see it out there yet, but they said it was going to happen at 10 o'clock today. October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and CISA's theme is to do your part, hashtag be cyber smart. 
Um, each week throughout October, CISA is highlighting different ways individuals and organizations can improve their cybersecurity efforts, and we're doing that through some webinars. Um, we've had them each week on Wednesdays. Uh, first week was Be Cyber Smart. This week was Fight the Fish. Next week is Explore, Experience, and Share, and week four of October will be called Cybersecurity First. You can go to cisa.gov forward slash live to see videos of the past presentations or to get signed up for the new presentations. And CISA continues to prioritize ransomware education. Um, we host a website, stopransomware.gov, where you can find U.S. government tools, information, and resources to help to reduce the risk of ransomware attacks and to improve your resilience. I think uh, Swick Myers forwarded this uh, to his email distribution list, but on September 28th, CISA published the Insider Risk Management Tool to help more organizations manage, detect, and prevent insider threats from being a risk to our physical and cybersecurity systems. And on September 28th, CISA and the National Security Agency released an information sheet entitled Selecting and hardening remote access virtual private network solutions. Um, factors to consider when choosing a VPN provider and how to make sure it's configured and secured. Sec it's secured. Um, so, you know, the conversation that I've been having here and just sharing with you really speaks to the fact that we are in an IP-centric uh, emergency communications world and where some of these topics that we talk about, uh, we think, well, that's IT's problem. Well, the fact is, is it can no longer be IT's problem. It needs to be our problem. It's a business problem, not just IT's problem. Um, Chris mentioned that he had presented at IWCA, IWCE, and thank you for that, Chris. Um, it's really neat that the uh, good work that Iowa is doing gets put on a national stage and, and people get to know Chris as your SWIC and, uh, again, the great work that's happening in uh, Iowa. Uh, Chris talked about the tick fog uh, meeting was held, and so um, that will conclude my report. I'd be happy to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I think I uh, jumped over the uh, AT&T FirstNet report uh, from Tyler Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we do have several new um, updates um, from our last meeting for the FirstNet network. Um, we have two new sites, uh, one in Lacona and Warren County, um, another in Columbia and Marion County. Uh, we have a site in Corville near the University of Iowa um, to help with game day saturation. And then uh, just yesterday, we had three new sites come online um, in Claremont, Frankville and Monona, Iowa. Um, we did provide a brief training on HPE um, in our FirstNet uh, subcommittee meeting. And if anyone needs or requests information, I can provide that as well. That's all for my report. Thank you. On to the uh, standards working group, Swift Myers. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, standards Working Group met last month. Uh, the topic of discussion was Standard 1.4.0, which is a statewide pursuit uh, communication standard. Uh, we got the document back from operations. They had a lot of really good edits to it, and those edits were accepted and aggregated into the document and then passed on to governance. Uh, so that's the report uh, from standards for the month. I'll go ahead and take any questions. Hearing none, please move to information sharing framework. Yes, thank you. I uh, covered a lot of this previously, um, and, and Jason had a very good question about CAD vendors that are going into this. So I do want to let everybody know, uh, not to repeat anything, but we probably will have something coming up within the next uh, four to six weeks on possible locations for where this project would be undertaken. Of course, it's going to require that there be willing participants and that they have a desire to go through something like this. But we will hopefully have the wheels in motion with this uh, starting in the next uh, four to six weeks. And um, uh, with Jason's feedback, we'll also maybe put a little bit more emphasis on the CAD vendors as well uh, going forward. 
So that'll be the report for that. Uh, next month, I will move all that uh, information sharing framework uh, information down to uh, item H under uh, bullet point 16. So. Thank you. Um, as was shared last uh, month, there's been uh, considerable uh, dialogue or coordination between uh, you and uh, Blake. Uh, is there a leading body that's overseeing this, or is it a, a, the early uh, preliminary uh, investigation into this? That's a really good question. Um, and, and when Blake and I have talked and we started going over this this discussion before this project really even was presented to these bodies here with the ISIX board and 901 councils. Um, we were kind of looking at, at, at the way things are done here in the state of I, and we've kind of realized that 911 has a home, uh, voice interoperability has a home, and CAD is one of those things that kind of crosses a couple of different Rubicons simultaneously. So as far as ownership goes or working the lead on the project, um, we didn't really feel like there was a good way to do that. So this is truly a joint venture between Blake and I and therefore the council and the board. So um, as far as the leads go, I would say in this case, uh, representatives from the entire state of Iowa are taking the lead, which I think will be beneficial for us. It, it, it removes any undue influence from the process, and we can really take a good pragmatic and cerebral approach to it by uh, working the channels that Blake and I have through the board and also the council. So hopefully that answers your question. Perfect. Thank you. Any further questions on the information sharing? So the ultimate goal with this, uh, really there's three phases to it, uh, Wendy. Um, there are uh, the initial phases where we do the information gathering, and that's just the classification and qualification and quantification of what people actually have and what's actually going on. Uh, CAD to CAD interoperability has been something that's discussed for a long time, various levels of government, various industries, and has brought varying levels of success. So the approach we're taking here, number one, is just to work with CISA and their contractors. And again, the nice thing is they're doing a lot of the legwork on this for us, is to qualify and quantify what's actually out there. Phase two would be meeting with those stakeholders that are selected, figuring out what they have going on, and then really working with them to develop kind of a needs analysis and then a needs-based approach and get that in writing and then get that in front of industry and CISA as a whole to make sure that everybody's aware of what's actually needed as opposed to what people think we need. And then phase three, which doesn't necessarily have any federal funding yet, but it may down the road if, if phase one and phase two are successful, is possibly looking at building an interface or, or at least the framework for an interface between CAD systems of, of different manufacturers. So as far as what we're going to get out of it, we'll, we'll, we'll get sort of this assessment of what's actually out there We'll have a paper that will document our actual needs based on that geographic area, which if we're very good at selecting the areas, it'll be representative of a fair amount of the state. And then in the end, we may actually end up with a framework for a working interface between CAD manufacturers. So we really stand to gain a lot out of this, which is why I think I'm excited about it. So, And I know uh, your operational picture, I would imagine, too, with you being in Woodbury County, uh, bordering to other states that there's a unique interest in this as well since uh, the metro area in, in Sioux City does span a couple different states. So. All right. Um, any old business? There's no old business on the agenda, so we'll move on to uh, new business. Um, Chris, I think you've got, uh, or uh, Chief Dennard has the updated applicant uh, Participation plan. Do you want to handle this, or I can? Uh, I'm I'm remote. Go ahead. Sounds good. It, it sounds like you're remote, and there's a lot going on, so we'll handle it here. Um, so the updated participation plan is in front of everybody here, and on page one, there's no real changes. Uh, you know, this is all basically straightforward. It's still contact information. Uh, agency information, and then also what type of access they want, user level one, two, three, or four. The highlighted sections on page two are really what's different here. Uh, for the users of ISIX that would fall under level two and higher, which is where you get into operational use of the system, uh, we have modified this to include paging talk groups, as said before. 
Paging talk groups present some u- u- unique loading to the system. It's not bad by any means, but it is something that you do want to qualify because in order for pagers to work right, there have to be certain configurations that are accomplished within the system to make this happen. And this was something that was voiced as as something that needed to be on the initial loading analysis. So under the types of talk groups, there's still a section for law enforcement, still a section for fire, EMS, emergency management, public works, uh, schools, secondary roads. And then the new column is paging, or the new row, I should say, is paging. Uh, and then a number of other talk groups. And, and we've also added some text there that, that prompts the user to clarify what it is they're asking for in the comments section. Uh, what we've learned from some past applications is that those comments can be absolute gold when these things are evaluated. So those are the changes to the applicant participation plan. The rest of page two is the same. The rest of page three is the same. And then uh, as a part of this participation plan in another worksheet that's built into it, uh, we also have um, a, a radio inventory that users can still take advantage of, and then those radio counts are posted on page two. So that's the update to the participation plan. It was moved forward from the user group committee for approval today. Um, as a non-moting mem- member, I can't make that motion, but uh, Mr. Chair, if you want to open that up, uh, we could certainly do that. I will entertain a motion. Thank you. And a second? Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On to the uh, ISIX uh, standards approval for the pursuit policy, uh, standard 1.4.0. Yes, thank you. And since uh, Governance Chair Hoffman isn't here, I can handle that. Before we do roll into that, though, Mr. Chair, I do want to point out uh, for everybody here, uh, Captain Brian Smith is is attending in place for Bureau Chief Kendig from DNR, who couldn't make it today. Uh, Brian, I see you're still on the go-to meeting, so thank you again for attending. Uh, Holly, can we let the role reflect that? Captain Smith is on the meeting today as well. Uh, so we'll roll into standards approval. Uh, standard 1.4.0 has undergone extensive editing and review uh, comment uh, from the uh, general populace and then comment adjudication. Uh, this has been an exceptionally long but I think uh, useful process. Um, this has been seen by many individuals, many agencies, and has been thoroughly worked over many times. And if you look at the review date initially, this, this goes back to January 26th. So we have been working on this for quite some time. Uh, governance reviewed it after all the edits from uh, standards and then operations and uh, found it to be appropriate and, and pretty comprehensive. Uh, and then again, as a non-voting member of, of this board, I cannot make a motion, but uh, that's the information on the standard. And Mr. Chair, I'll pass it back to you for any potential action. I will entertain a motion. Got a first and a second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Excellent. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Any uh, public comment today? Mr. Chair, Rob Denner. Great, Rob. What do you have? I I would just like to remind the participants of the meeting that this afternoon, the Region 15 700 megahertz Regional Planning Committee and 800 megahertz Regional Planning Committee will be meeting. Information's on the ISIC board calendar. Excellent. Thank you for that update. Any further uh, public comment? All right. The uh, meeting will be adjourned at 11.18. Thank you.